At this session, I want to talk about the force and its effects on the object. What is force? Force is a kind of the push or pull on the upon objects that uh, is resulted by an object's interaction with another object. So, force can cause a shape of the object to change, the size of the object changes, smaller or bigger, and the force can cause motion. I mean, an object, if it is moving, maybe it goes faster or it slows down. Or maybe if it is uh, it's moving, it stops moving. So these are the effects of the force on the objects, on the shape, on the size, or on the motion of the object. Force is a vector quantity. Um, first of all, you have to know that what the vector quantity is. The vector quantities are those quantities that they have both size or magnitude and also direction. But the scalar quantities, they only have size. Now, this part, we have uh, scalars and vectors quantities. So, um, scalars and the vector quantities are talking about those quantities that uh, they are actually placed into two categories. One of them are scalars, of course, and one of them are vectors. The scalars means they have only size or magnitude. The size or magnitude of these kind of quantities are very important for us. But the direction uh, towards, for example, which one they are going to is not very important for us. So, for the scalar quantities, they have magnitude or size. Examples like mass, like density, speed, and length or volume. So it's not important, is it, towards north, towards east, south, or downward, upward, to the left or right. These directions are not important for us. Just what is important is the size of, that, of those, for example, uh, properties of the matters that we have measured. And uh, here we have vectors quantities, the quantities that are um, actually uh, measure and you have both size and direction. For example, like weight, force, gravity, and velocity, there are examples of these kind of the um, quantities or properties of the matters that we measure. And it's really, for, for example, important for me. Um, if I'm using my car to throw from this point to that point, uh, when we're talking about the velocity, I want to know how fast I'm going and what is my direction. I'm going to the east, am I going to the south or north? So the velocity is very important to know the direction and also the size of that, uh, of the, for example, velocity, how much it is, the value. And at the same time, um, I, should, I should know uh, from where to where I am uh, decided to move or travel. And here in the speed, the difference here, for example, between these two, is that the speed is a kind of a scalar quantities. It means, it means that I want to know only how fast I go, but I don't want to know from where to where, uh, what is the direction of the movement. How do, show, how do we show the vector quantities? Um, they can, we can use the arrows of the vectors to show them. And the tail of this arrow is showing the uh, size of the force or the size of that quantity. You can measure and the length of the tail of the arrow shows the size or magnitude of the quantity. And here the tip of this arrow is showing us, giving us information about the direction. Is it from left to right? Is it up to down? or is it uh, north east or any other uh, different directions. So we have to know that the quantities that are scalars and the vectors, they are different because in the scalars quantity, we only have a size. And the size for these uh, kind of the quantities is very important for us. And the vectors, um, we have to know about the direction and about the size of those uh, values uh, that we have measured. And the examples like force, gravity, and velocity. 
Uh, how do we show the vectors, vector quantities? We show these arrows, that the tail of the arrow, the length of it, the length of the tail of the arrow shows the size of the quantity, and here the tip of it, the direction. What are the effects of the force on the objects? They can change the size of the objects. For example, if you have a rubber band, if you stretch it, you are applying a force in the opposite direction. So what's happening to them, uh, to the, uh, this rubber band? It will be a stretch, I mean it gets longer or the length increases. So what I'm doing here, the two opposite forces from the two directions, in a different opposite directions, it causes the objects to change its size. So the size is getting oh, bigger, longer, it's getting longer. Uh, the effect of the force on the shape of the objects, um, they can get a smaller, they can get large, shrunk or deformed. By applying a force, you can change the shape of the objects. Or the direction of the movement. Maybe uh, if a ball is rolling on the floor, and you just you can just uh, apply a force in the opposite direction of the movement of that ball and cause it to uh, change its direction and move into, for example, another way. So um, and also we have the effect of the force on the motion of the object. It means that if something is not moving, you can uh, by applying a small force, you can cause it to move, stop moving. Uh, maybe it is moving and you just uh, stop it by putting your hand in front of it or you are applying a force in the opposite direction. And maybe you can cause it to move faster or moving slower. So these are the effects of the force on the objects. It can be a push, it can be a pull on the objects. So you push the object or you pull it to cause uh, something to happen, whether that something is changing the size, in the motion, in the direction of the movement, in the shape of the object. What happens if the forces that are applied on the objects they are both on a straight line? Let's see some examples. We have a box here, and we have two forces. It's like, imagine the light pushing, two persons are here, Standing here at the other side, they try to push the box into that direction, to the right side. This person is pushing it by two Newton's force, and there is another person helping him, perhaps, and it's applying three Newtons. But both of the forces are in the same direction. So, let's see what happens to the box. Does it move at all? And if it moves, through which direction it will move? So in order to do that, because both of the uh, move, both of the forces are on the uh, same line and they are in a, towards the same, pointed to the same direction. You see, both of them are pointed to the right side. So of course, the box I know that it will move to the right side. And in order to know the size of the force, you have to add the both force together. It means that 3 newtons plus 2, it will, uh, the resultant force will be 5 newtons. It means that the size of the force is 5 newtons and the direction will be to the right. So these two people are, uh, that are pushing the box, they cause the box to move to the right stop moving to the right side but how, uh, and how much is the force, the total force applied on the box is 5 newtons. Another example, now if we have again two forces but in the opposite direction, they are not in the same direction. If they are in the same direction, it doesn't matter if they are both of them showing me pointing to the up or down or left or right. But if you are those forces that are on the same direction, you have to add them up, sum them up together. And if they are in the opposite direction, you have to minus. So here, the same box we have, but this time, the force, one person is pushing the box from this direction, and the other one from here. So one of them is pushing 
three newtons with the force of three newton and the other one two newtons is applied to the box but they are in the opposite direction so I have to say that finally this box will move, will move to which direction and what would be the resultant force the resultant force okay these two newtons can three newtons minus two newton becomes one newton so the direction of the movement is to the left and the resultant force size is one newton if these two forces are the same sizes for example here this was two and this one was also two what would happen to the box here they balance out each other. The two forces balance out each other. It means that the resultant force would be zero. So what, how, what would be the effect? And how much would be the resultant force? The resultant force is zero Newton. It means that the side is zero, so it means that box won't move at all.